Good morning guys, or whatever time it is of day when you're watching this. Today I just wanted to sit down, do my makeup and have a chat with you. I have a lot of updates regarding our wedding, so this video is mostly going to be about that. I also want to fill you in on my hens night as well because that was one of the best weekends I've ever had. So lots of wedding talk in this video. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. I'm very lucky to still be working at the moment. My shifts have dropped, but I'm still going to work, so that's a bonus. But anyway, I've got my coffee here in my Kath and Kim, oh well, Kath and Kel mug. So let's just put on some makeup and have a chat. Okay, so let's start with an update on my wedding. If you follow me on Instagram, then you would have heard the news, but Clinton and I have had to postpone our wedding. So around a week ago, I think it was around the 22nd, 23rd of March, we had to actually make the decision to postpone. A few days later, a new law come into place where weddings were only allowed to be five people, so the decision would have been made for us anyway. But the week leading up to that was so emotional, like everyone was still going ahead with things, the venue was like, yep, yeah, we're all business as usual. And so I was finding it really hard to continue being excited about wedding planning where in the back of my mind I knew it could be ripped away from me in the next six weeks and I was like well I don't want to keep planning and then two weeks before the big day we go into lockdown or something so I was quite upset all week just thinking of all the what ifs and then on the Sunday night our venue organizer posted a message in our Facebook group saying like, brides in the next six weeks, you should really reconsider your plans. Um, postponement dates will be open from whenever. And that's when like it really hit us like, okay, this isn't going to go ahead. So of course that was really heartbreaking to hear. It's just like so much time and effort, like literally over a year of planning and organizing and now six weeks beforehand we have to cancel like it's just it was so heartbreaking and it still is mm, this foundation is actually quite light i'm using the bys glass glow testing this out for a review i think it might be too fair wow so anyway we made that decision um I told a few people, like, I don't know, a few customers, and I know their opinion doesn't really matter, but like I had a few people say to me like, oh well, like you're not the only one, things could be worse. And it's like, well yeah, that's true, but this is my pain right now, so if you're gonna ask me how I am, if you could sympathize with me, that would be nice, instead of just telling me like, oh, things could be worse. Oh, it just made me so angry to hear that and it's kind of made me a bit like put me off talking about it because I don't want people to think like oh like stop complaining it could be worse it's just a wedding like yeah I understand that but still it's important in my life and for it to be postponed so close to the day it really hurt okay I think I need to add something else on top because <laughs> I look so ghostly. I think it's a bit too pink toned. See how my neck, I don't know, I still see a bit of yellow or warmth in it. Okay, I'm just gonna mix it in with my L'Oreal True Match. Although I think the only thing that's really gonna work is bronzing myself up. <laughs> so once that decision was made, it was like, all right, we need to get cracking on a new date. So I was literally on the phone to all of my vendors trying to find a date that works for everyone. So postponement dates for my venue were open from November to February. They only do one wedding a week on the weekends, but they've opened up during the week as well. But during those months, it's boiling hot. And we chose May because we didn't want to get married in the heat. It's just not what we wanted. So. 
we made the decision just to go for the same time next year. So we were very lucky we were able to lock in a new date. It isn't until June next year, which is so far away, but the day will come. <laughs> and we were able to get all of our vendors, except I'm still working with one of them. So out of like 11 or 12 vendors, we've got most of them on the same date again, which was such a relief because I was like, if I have to go and find a new photographer or celebrant, I, uh, no, don't put me through that again. I have been so impressed with all of my vendors and how easy they have made it to reschedule the day. In a lot of their cancellation policies, that's something that you're not allowed to do, but because of the current situation, they have made an exception and they just made it so easy. They worked with me. I didn't lose any deposits. Like it just means a lot. And I'm so grateful that they made the process so easy because you know, they're running small businesses too. And a lot of them were encouraging postponement rather than cancellation because they're losing out too. Can you imagine all these vendors and all the jobs they are going to lose over the next couple of months? Like, it's insane. So yeah, we do have our new date booked in and I feel better having that. Like before when the wedding was still going ahead in May, the feeling, that sick feeling of not knowing what was gonna happen was literally taking over me. But now that I know, okay, it's postponed, this is the new date, I feel like a sense of relief. Even though it sucks, I feel better. So yesterday I went over all my wedding plans and everything that I still had to do. I did myself up a nice new to-do list, things that I need to take care of now, and then things that can wait. Like I literally won't have to do anything until six weeks before my new date <laughs> like it's gonna be so weird i just also wanted to mention how good the accommodation we booked have been as well i had an airbnb booked up near the wedding for the boys the night before and i was like great like they're not gonna change the date like it's so close but she was like oh my god like I'm so sorry it's all right I totally understand she just asked if we could still pay our booking in full because she is losing out on cash flow as well with so many cancellations which I totally understand our videographer has asked if we could pay half of what's remaining as well because she's losing out on cash flow um she said that's fine I will change the dates for you and we'll just move it until you need it Oh my God, like, thank you. Same with our honeymoon. We had booked to go away for a few nights just across the border down at this little private um, luxury getaway. We had paid a deposit of over a thousand dollars and I was like, shit, why not getting that back? But oh my God, so sweet yet again. She was like, if you want to cancel, it's just a $25 fee and you will get your full refund. I'm like, are you serious? Um, but what we end up going with is we've just put our booking on hold and she said when we figure out new dates Just call her back and she'll book us in without losing any money like oh, I just can't believe it. So anyway, it has been quite a rough week and a half Clinton is quite upset too. Like he's disappointed that it's come to this but he handled it a lot better than I did, but he's like, Tanika, you've done 90% of the planning. So I understand that it affects you more, like all your hard work, I'm like, yeah. But we've got our new date scheduled in, who knows what's gonna happen. There could still be restrictions. There could, like just no one knows. So we just have to wait and see, and hopefully we can go ahead on our new date. And now for the next year, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I can get back into YouTube more, which is great because I did have to stop uploading as much because I couldn't do it all with planning the wedding as well. So I'm happy that I can get back onto YouTube and start creating more content. After the wedding, our plan was to start saving for a house deposit and build a house. So 
we can just get a kickstart on that now and start saving for a house deposit. We didn't have any plans to start a family, so don't get too excited. <laughs> Although my mum was like, damn it, now that puts my grandbabies back another year. I'm like, okay, grandbabies weren't in the picture just yet, mum, so calm down. So even though this situation is quite sucky, I'm trying to look at some of the positives. And a few of those are that one of my bridesmaids is due to have her baby in like a week. And we were quite worried about how she was going to recover and if she'd be able to party all night. <laughs> so a bonus is that by the time next year rolls around, she'll be sweet. Same with another one of my besties. She is due in around two weeks. So she'll be able to party at the next wedding and celebrate the next wedding, our wedding. <laughs> Now that I've come to terms with the fact that this is what's happening, I am starting to notice some of the positives out of the situation. So I just need to focus on that and know that our day will come. And we've been together for almost 12 years now. So what's another year? Another positive from this situation is that there's talk of Hen's Night 2.0. <laughs> oh my God, can you imagine? Probably not as extravagant as the first one because, oh my God, it was freaking amazing. So let me tell you about it, okay? So we drove down to the Gold Coast to Neil, my maid of honor, had organized this massive mansion for us to stay in right along the canal. The first night we just swam in the pool and chilled out, had a few casual drinks, ordered Uber Eats, it was a nice chill night. We had a big day the next day and I can't back it up. So <laughs> I was like, let's take it easy tonight. So the next day, oh my God, we got up, had some brekkie and then we were at the like boat, what's it called? It's not called a boat ramp, marina. We were at the marina at like 9 or 9.30, ready for our party boat. So we went on this like catamaran, just our group. There was the driver and also a skipper. Her name was Megan and oh my God, she was so awesome. She had a camera and she was like, girls, like I'm just gonna take photos of you all day. Like I remember one point we were laying down at the front of the boat and she's like, look up here. She's standing on the roof of the boat, like taking photos of us. <laughs> it was so good. So it was raining for a little bit, but luckily that pissed off. We had the music blasting, drinks. Oh my God, it was just so good. We went over to this little um, island, kind of sandbanky thing and chilled out there for a while, played some cricket, just were animals really. So on the same little sandbank there was another boat that had pulled up and it was clearly a bucks party. And as our boat was pulling away, one of my girlfriends was like, Tanika, flash of your tits. And I was like, so drunk by this point. I just ran over there and was like, ah. <laughs> Oh my God, I can't believe myself <laughs> oh the boat was just so fun just like drinking and dancing and paddle boards like we're going swimming it was just such a good morning then we went back to the house just chilled out for a bit and started to get ready for the night so i was upstairs getting ready and the girls were downstairs decorating when I come down, oh my God, there was like balloons everywhere, bride to be balloons. They had done this huge ass grazing table. It was so pretty. They even had cookies that were like in the shape of dicks and it said Tanika's hens and like, thanks for coming. You know, typical hens night stuff. There was even these cookies that said like, I'll insert a photo because I don't know if I'll get in trouble for saying these words on YouTube. <laughs> so drinks were flowing, we were having a good time, played a few games. The first game was absolutely hilarious. So Tanil had asked everyone's partners to take photos of their asses and then she had photos of their faces and I had to match their ass to their face. 
It was so good. And so everyone I got wrong, I had to do a jelly shot. I think there was about 20 because they included some of the kids as well. Oh my God, when I saw the first child's face, I was like, <laughs> Oh my God. So I think I got maybe eight wrong. I got Clinton's right, thank God. Our next game was Perfect Partners. So the girls had got Clinton and filmed him answering a bunch of questions. So they would play his question and answer. And then I had to answer the question. And if we matched, I passed. But if I got it wrong, I had to do a jelly shot. So again, I think I got about eight wrong. Although there was a lot of debate about if our answers matched up or not. <laughs> A lot of um, embarrassing secrets come out then, so yay. <laughs> so then we just continued to carry on and play a few more games and then all of a sudden there was a knock at the door. <laughs> so we had a nice friendly stripper turn up. Oh my god. He was crazy. Like. He was lifting me out of my chair, bloody spinning me around. He tipped oil all over his body and I was rubbing it. He, when he took off his belt, he put it around my neck and I was like... <laughs> he was like getting everyone involved right up in everyone's faces, except for Jackson. I had one boy there and he did not go near him, which was quite disappointing. Mm -hmm. But oh my god, it was wild. It was so fun. Apparently, Tanil had booked a different stripper, and his name, well, his stripper name was Tarzan. <laughs> but Tarzan got into a car crash like three days before the hens, so Tanil had to quickly organize a new one. So we're thinking maybe we'll get Tarzan for round two. So yeah, he was definitely a lot of fun. We all enjoyed that. After that, a few of us went out to Cavill Avenue to go clubbing. We went to like one club and then we were like, let's go. We were having so much more fun at home. And then the next morning, we all woke up pretty hungover. We got our Uber Eats Maccas and then packed up to go home. So it was the best weekend and it was just so nice having all my closest friends together. When I come downstairs and before we started all our games, um, the girls gave me a present with like a sash that said like future Mrs. Ackerman and some wine and a little um, hairpin. And I went to like start saying like, thank you everyone for coming, like how much it means to me and how much I love them all. But like, I couldn't get it out. Like it was just tears. I'm like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I feel so lucky and so blessed to have such a great group of girlfriends that truly care about me. So it was a really nice weekend. Okay, I am using the ColourPop So Jaded palette. Um, that was a collab with Kathleen Lights. These shades are beautiful and are blending like a dream. Wow. Okay, so my eyes are done. I feel like it's been a while since I've done a nice dramatic look, you know. Although I think false lashes would make it look better, but I just, just can't be bothered. I'm still testing out this Essence highlighter. I just, I just don't know. Like it's there, but I don't think it stays there. That looks pretty. Oh, yeah. I actually have this Huda Beauty lipstick in the shade Wifey that one of my girlfriends got me. Oh yeah. <gasps> that is my kind of shade and I already love this formula. I've got a few of the minis and oh my god, it's so good. All right, well, that is all from me today. Thank you all so much for watching and listening to what I had to say. I'm really excited to get back into YouTube and start creating more content. Hopefully I can get back to my regular schedule of two videos a week, hopefully more, we'll see. I hope you are all well and looking after yourself during this time. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.